this is how it goes with me. So I spent time, energy, and money to get this old rototiller running. And it starts right up and runs great. Put it in forward, reverse, drives just like it's supposed to. Drove it up to the garden, kicked her into gear, and started tilling. And then I hit a rock. And after I hit a rock, now the tines don't turn, so I'm guessing something broke in the transmission. Oh, three steps forward, two steps back. That's always how it is. Guess I'll be doing it by hand. Well, I did as much as I could until I just flat out ran out of steam. I think this garden's gonna get a lot smaller if I can't get that rototiller fixed, so. Ah, that's the plot we did. I didn't even get it finished. You know, the, the dirt is pretty good. I mean, it's sandy loam, turns over pretty easy. The problem is I'm still finding a lot of rocks and big rocks and uh, roots as well. So a lot of bending over and picking up, etc. And so my back is shot. And uh, yeah, turning it over by shovel, it's a lot of hard work. My dad used to do this every year. At the beginning of the season, he'd turn the garden over by shovel first. Man, now I know how crazy he was. <laughs> Still is. <laughs> Anyway, I got a load of compost I need to dump over here because it's going to rain and I surely don't want it in the truck with the rain coming down. So I'm just going to dump it here and at least if it rains on it, whatever nutrients are in it will return to the soil. So that's a good thing. As far as spreading it out and turning it in, yeah, I don't know. I may just end up taking shovels full and putting it where I plant. We'll see what happens. All right, so here's how it always goes. Get started on a project, one project leads to another project and so on and so on and so on and it never ends. So we had to diagnose the problem with this rototiller. Engine runs fine, wheels turn and drive, no problem. Just the tines weren't turning. So of course, in order to diagnose, we had to tear it down. That's a lot of parts to take off. Got inside and discovered that the, the chain had broke. So of course, once you discover what the problem is, then you gotta figure out the fix. And so we had to order parts. Then we had to wait for the parts. Now the parts are here. So now we gotta fix it and get it back together. So basically I gotta fish the chain in through and around the sprocket, get it back out and get it set up and then put a new link in it and get that chain back together and then just reassemble everything and we should be good to go. But like always, it's another project. Here's my load of compost. Basically what they do is they just sell you a load and it's one scoop. So it was a healthy, more than a yard for sure. $16.50, I guess I can't complain. Would have rather have a full truck, but it is what it is overall. Looks pretty good stuff. <clears throat> so, man. Feels like tar and oil. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway. Should help the soil. So we'll figure out how we're going to use it. Don't know if I'll spread it over the whole garden and till it in or whatever. Depends on if I get the tiller working. 
since it's supposed to rain tomorrow hopefully that give me a chance to work on it we'll see well i've turned this over all at least once by hand this year i turned over before it rained last time so i think we've gone through it all at least once pulled out a ton of roots see that big root pile over there and i threw other roots elsewhere but that's my biggest pile and i pulled out a ton of rocks which i've been basically throwing in that ditch so as not to waste the rocks but that's a ton of rocks and a ton of roots still got our compost sitting here went to town yesterday and bought some fencing materials so I think uh, we're getting closer. Need to get that tiller put back together so we can run the tiller through this once. And then uh, kind of I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plan out my rows, put compost over those rows, till the rows, and then uh, plant. So, I got 16 foot cattle panels to act as trellises for my tomatoes. We've got, uh, I think, 19 different tomato plants, 18 regular tomatoes, and one tomatillo. So, uh, basically, what we're going to do is alternate those every foot and a half, one side to the other. Technique we saw somewhere online. Everything you find on the internets. <laughs> anyway so uh that's kind of the plan got to measure out make sure we're 16 foot wide to, so our trellis fits if not we'll widen out a little bit more but i think we're pretty good and uh, once we get the tomatoes planted then we'll continue on with our other stuff and uh same kind of tactic we'll lay out where the row is going to go then we'll put compost over it then we'll till it in and then we'll plant and uh, yeah, hopefully that'll work pretty good. This is all our, an experimental garden cause it's the first garden we've ever grown here. We didn't do any soil tests or anything. So all the standards of modern technology we've, we've avoided uh, and we're gonna do it pioneer style, turn the dirt over, plant and see what happens. And, go from there we can hopefully uh, judge by the way our plants look as to maybe what we need to do to uh, help them out a little more for example we may uh, you know our, our soil is historically very acidic so I may uh, put down a little lime and uh, that'll help the pH and uh, maybe we'll throw down some other azomite or something like that for minerals. But other than that, we're going to let them grow and see what they do. And uh, yeah, it should be a fun experiment and uh, give us an idea of what we can do, at least right here. And later on, you know, we're going to put in a much bigger garden. This is just a little test garden that's uh, up here on top just because I felt like it. Spring called. Okay, the rototiller is all fixed and working good. We made a whole pass over the garden. At least the area that I turned over by hand. And now I threw down a layer of compost and we're going to till that into the soil and see how that looks and then we'll probably do the same thing for the next section over because these are going to be our rows of tomatoes so want to get that good because if there's anything i seriously care about out of this garden it's tomatoes because you can't buy tomatoes in the store that tastes like homegrown That's what it looks like till then. I tell you what, I know it takes years of amendments 
to make your soil good. I think if I put that entire pile just in this row, that would be pretty good. But I need it for more than that. So I think I'm going to continue uh, every once in a while going to town and buying more compost. And if nothing else, I'll just pile it up. I mean, this compost isn't completely broke down, so having piles of it and then letting it continue to compost couldn't be a bad thing. So anyway, that's where we're at. I'm gonna throw some more compost down in the next section and see if we can get set up for these tomatoes. I got her turned over. Looks pretty good, I think. So I would prefer to have a lot more compost in there. I mean, this sandy loam soil is not the best, but you work with what you got. We're just gonna keep amending it. But what I'm gonna do is, everywhere I put a plant, I'll put a scoop of uh, compost with the plant and that should help too. So that's the plan. Next, we gotta get the cattle panels and T-posts and everything over here and start setting that up. But some teak posts the old-fashioned way So what I did, I just uh, put them, I, I set them in the end ones, uh, three squares, which is two feet. And then I centered the, the other one. That should give us plenty of support and plenty of room on the ends, whatever. I didn't think I, I wanted the T-post right on the ends figured it'd be better to offset a little bit because this cattle panel is pretty strong so it doesn't really the cattle panel doesn't need the support as much as uh, you know just holding it up so uh, next thing we're gonna do is stand it up and tie it off right, when you buy a bundle of uh, t-posts at uh, tractor supply they give you bags of the wire clips too so that's nice 
and the price uh, less than five dollars a tea post that's decent I don't want the tea post sitting right on the ground. Fortunately, I did not find my uh, fencing pliers. I got a pair, but I don't know where they're at, as usual. So I just got a pair of channel locks, should be able to do it with that. Not as easy as with fencing pliers, but So what I'm doing, I'm lifting these up off the ground. I don't know how much I lifted it up, but let me measure. About five inches. And that, uh, just to keep the cattle panel out of the dirt. You don't really need support right at the, at the ground level, so I figure this is a good way to do it. Got both uh, trellises set up. I put them about six feet apart. That gives basically three feet from each one. So you figure a foot and a half or so for the plant and then a walkway in the middle. So should be good. If not, we can always adjust next year. But uh, that should work. Panels aren't, uh, you know, perfectly straight or anything. I didn't worry about any of that. I just laid them out, put them in the ground, tied them up to the T-post. And that's good enough for this round. Now we're going to go get the plants and start getting them in the ground. It's coming together little by little. We've got tomatoes planted, so... This side we did 
early girls and uh, we spaced them a little bit closer together than I originally planned because I figured ah, let me go ahead and get six plants on each side keep it simple and so on this side is big boys yeah big boy so early girl then big boy then over here we got better boy and uh, we put these even a little more close together and we got the uh, tomatillo here on the end that's an heirloom tomatillo so if it does well we can gather some seeds from it and then on the other side we went ahead and put our peppers so here we've got a lunchbox red which is a small red sweet pepper that's just good to eat then we've got two uh, gigante jalapenos gotta have your jalapenos for your salsa and serrano also for salsa but usually they're a little bit hotter than the jalapenos not much just a little and then we've got another lunchbox orange little sweet pepper that's good for eating so i got an orange and a red so i put those at opposite ends i don't know that they would cross pollinate and change the color but i figured ah let's separate them just in case so that uh you know the red stays red and the orange stays orange i hope and then i decided to do a few mounds for my squash and so uh, this is a yellow mound which basically i've got a golden zucchini a crook neck and a straight neck squash all yellow squash and then over here i've got all green which is all zucchinis there's uh, two noche zucchinis and one uh, black beauty which is also an heirloom so hopefully if that does well we can get some seeds from that as well so that's where we're at we still got some more stuff to plant but we're making progress it's hot and windy you know these plants are going to wilt down and everything because we put them in the ground and they're out in the sun and we'll water them this evening so hopefully they'll all be okay now if you don't know if you've never uh, planted a garden and done tomatoes tomatoes are, are kind of a cool plant in the way that any part of a tomato that touches the ground the plant will basically start to grow roots and uh, that's a cool thing because when you take a young plant you can plant it real deep all the way up to just like the top two shoots or whatever as deep as you can get it and uh, all of that stem will produce roots and that's pretty cool now usually what i do is i break all the the leaves off the shoot shooter leaves whatever the the branches that are coming out i just break them off the main stem you can see there's some laying there that i broke off and then i put the plant in the ground you know up to like the top couple of branches and do it like that but i was noticing on one of the tomatoes that had been leaning over and touching the ground that it had roots coming out of uh, one of the offshoots and so i thought well if the offshoots will grow roots too then why not bury them so a few of them i buried like that with all of just took the leaves and everything and buried them and i want to see how that does so just a little test but in theory it should be good so anyway that's where we're at we still got some more plants to plant stick with us let's see how it goes so here's where we're at today i've put up a fence around the area and a gate and i just used some uh these are called green panels they're basically a cattle panel uh, but they're only like 24 bucks at the tractor supply and much cheaper than a standard cattle panel I don't know what the difference is because the measurements are about the same The panels here are smaller at the bottom and bigger at the top, but I Really still don't know the difference and why uh, The cattle panels are like 80 90 bucks and these are only 24 so anyway, they work just fine as far as over there i just put up safety fence the plastic fence because i didn't really have time to put in anything else and this is a temporary 
you know we wanted to do this this year see how it goes and we're definitely going to make some adjustments before next season and of course uh you know in the good box store fashion i got plenty of tomatoes they came in six packs and uh so these are our uh early girls and they're all coming along good no tomatoes yet but they've all starting to bloom and uh they're just coming along these are uh our big boys and same thing on the big boys they're uh they're coming along they i don't think any of them have bloomed yet but i see the tassels starting to grow and these are the better boys and uh you know they're just a little bit further behind as well but uh, overall they're looking good this here is uh our tomatillo i think we've uh fixed our yellowing problem we hit it with some epsom salts and uh today it's looking much greener than it was so i think we're uh, coming right along we've been getting a lot of rain though uh this one here is uh, our row of peppers and uh this is a uh you know lunchbox pepper those small delicious sweet peppers that are just good for eating and uh it's looking a little bit yellow but uh, same thing, we're hitting it with some Epsom salts and trying to, you know, bring it along. My shadow's hitting hard here, trying to find a right angle. Uh, that's a uh, jalapeno. See some bugs are eating on it. And this is another jalapeno, and this one's already got jalapenos growing on it. And then the next one we got is a serrano. And, uh, you know, the theme of jalapenos and serranos are just for making good salsa with the fresh tomatoes that should be awesome and then uh, another lunchbox pepper this one is a uh, orange variety so I've got an orange and a red and I planted them at opposite ends just so that they hopefully don't cross pollinate between the two and then mess up the colors uh, at least that's what I was thinking when I did it we'll see how it works out over here I've got all my yellow squash uh, there's Straight neck heirloom here, crook neck there, and uh, this is a golden zucchini. And uh, look at that, got one growing on there, coming right along. So uh, that's probably going to be the first vegetable that I get out of this garden is that golden zucchini. This here is a uh, cantaloupe, and it's uh, you can see it's got a bloom on there. And this over here is a sugar baby watermelon, and it's got a bloom on it as well. And then these are my green squash or zucchinis. Uh, so two noche, noche zucchinis. Uh, and then this one here is a black beauty, which is also an heirloom zucchini. And again, those uh, have a very, very slight yellowing to them, but uh, we hit them as well with the Epsom salts and uh, hoping that helps. Uh, if you notice here, I've got a trench around my rows because we got uh, oh, three and a quarter inches of rain the other day and uh, it almost flooded this garden out. But uh, we've got some turnips coming up here, which... Uh, uh, guess you can just barely see them in there but they're coming along those are radishes next to it are some beets that are hard to see because uh, they're still pretty small and then we've got three rows of corn we've got some early uh, golden this first row here is the uh, early sun glow that's what it is early sun glow and this one here is peaches and cream and this one here is candy corn and uh, so you know the candy corn takes the longest at 89 days from planting the seed to harvest and uh, this one I believe is about 83 days and this one I think is uh, 60 can't see it anymore but I think it was 68 days uh, so we still got a long way to go. I planted them late. I'm behind. And uh, dealing with tons of rain. But overall, I think it's going to work out. And uh, 
you know, I had to dig these trenches to try to control some of the rain runoff, keep from flooding everything out. But, uh, yeah, we're going to see how it goes. This garden is experimental. That's where we're at. Stick with us. Let's see how it goes. As always, folks, we appreciate you watching our videos and supporting our channel. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell, all that good stuff. And uh, stick with us and see what we got coming next. Until then, take care, God bless, and we'll see you on the next one.